It's Jack Goodings here talking about my previous experiences of narcissistic abuse and my current experiences of being alienated from my children and being an alienated child as well. I was a scapegoat, I was the unseen child, I was a golden child and I've only just recently started talking about lots of things that have been happening and those people who seemingly got away with stuff and seem to be the light of the salt of the earth and I'm revealing, telling you, I'm telling you what actually happened and hopefully you'll be able to make some connections and see certain behaviors in some people and see that actually it's, they might not be who you had thought they were. So before COVID came, we used to go visit my mum quite a lot, every morning pretty much. So my mum became diabetic. My stepdad is diabetic, type 2 diabetes, and he knew what diabetes was, he knew how to take care of it, and he was pretty careful with it as well, so he knew really well about diabetes. But he would still be overfeeding my mum, and he'd be giving her all these kinds of treats, and her blood sugar levels are all over the place, completely out of whack. So he can't tell me he didn't know what he was doing. And the point that I was trying to make on this one is I think he was trying to kill her. So I think he was trying to get rid of her because the way that he talked to her is like, he didn't even want to be there. He talked all kinds of rubbish about her. And it was like degrading of me mum and all. And he had no patience for whatsoever. And he couldn't wait to get out of there, even though he made it seem like, you know, he'd be there and it seemed like he loved her. So it's just 38 years of marriage. You don't keep on going down there to visit and then talking rubbish about them and everything and expecting me to go along with it and all it's just terrible and then trying to be the martyr and, and oh you can't do it oh it's so i can't do it jack oh it's too much on me well, well you're only visiting it's not like you're looking after her anymore see so the thing is you'd also then take a sweets i opened up her drawer and she had all these sweets all the chocolate and i said you can't give her that she said, oh, they, they don't know nothing. They don't know what they're talking about. So she got blinking diabetes. She said, oh, Jack, they don't know what they're talking about at all. So well, you got diabetes too. You know not to give. Thing is, right, my mum, she didn't know any better. She had, like, dementia, so she'd eat what was there. She had nice goodies. And it's like he'd come round and he'd say, yeah, yeah, Pam was her name. You want to have another one? Get that down, yeah. Enjoy it. You like that, don't you? I have another one. I didn't actually realize until just a little bit later on that was a sickening and terrible thing to do. I thought, first of all, that he didn't know what he was doing. And I called the social services because I was worried, I was concerned for my mum's health, and I was concerned that he was being a danger to me, mum, not knowing. I, you know, I thought. Well, he didn't know, didn't he? You put all the pieces together. This is what the narcissist thing, isn't it? It's like you think they don't know what they're doing. You think they're not doing things intentional, but they are. They don't realize that till later on, and nothing makes sense until you turn it on its head when you start thinking like, okay, let's think of it like this way. Let's assume that they did know what they're doing, and that all these things that they're doing and saying, the arguments and all these dangerous stuff and all the things we're saying, well, they should know this, but they don't know that, and maybe it's because. Let's, let's actually turn it around. Let's say they did know what they were doing, and that point, that is when everything seems to make total complete sense. It's like, oh my, bloody hell, and everything fits, doesn't it? You tell me, when you realize that that narcissist person, that that bad person in your life, when you realize that actually the things that they were doing were intentional, then everything made sense, and it's like, Bloody hell, of course. In other words, when you think the worst, you put that scenario in place and actually that does fit. That's the only way then when I can assume that my stepdad was trying to kill my mum. How could it be that I got so unnerved about this and I was so concerned about it that I actually contacted social services and I got them to keep check on me mum. I contacted the, the care home and I told them, you know, that my stepdad was giving sweets and chocolates and reminded them that my mum was diabetic and 
that please make sure that they don't leave the chocolates in her drawer, that they make sure that she doesn't get all that chocolate. I wasn't too happy with their response because they said, well, we can't control what your stepdad does. But the thing is, is me mum's in your care. So can you please at least take my concern seriously? Because it's a matter of safeguarding, if nothing else. <sighs> all they were interested in was trying to prove that they were actually doing something for me mum terrible thing so they were showing me oh yeah we're checking here we're checking on that time but they didn't really take it seriously i was so worried for me mum anyway so i'll leave that one at that narcissists even if you think they're okay you know they might be a children's granddad for years whatever it might be anybody they're not the people they put themselves as and when you realize that they're actually doing these things that are detrimental to somebody's well-being, to your well-being, and they're intentionally doing that, it does kind of rock your world and it turns your life upside down. You're not the same person after that. Nobody will believe you, obviously. So you're on your own. That's a lonely journey. Take care till then.